Hello, it's Ryan Gordon, and here we are for Unlucky Part 13. Um, so, I thought I'd do something a little different today. It's been a little bit, so... Um, I thought today we would talk about zip files, which seems like a weird thing to say uh, in an audio player, but um, most Winamp skins are not loose files like this. They're actually in zip files, so... Um, and normally when you say, oh, I'd like to add zip files to something, you would think, okay, let me go find a library piece of middleware that will take care of loading zip files for me. And I gotta tell you, eventually we're going to do that, but zip files are so easy to use that I wanted to uh, start with loading them ourselves by hand, just to show you that you don't have to be scared of these things. So um, there is something on the internet called the PKWare app note. I'm gonna Google for this real quick. Oh, it's right there, how nice. Um, right there, okay. This, is, this, this text file has been on the internet since, like, there was an internet, you know, like, this, since the public could get at this in the late 80s, you know, you could get at this thing, and it was passed around on bulletin board systems, uh, by dial-up modems and stuff, and all this text file does is tell you the layout of how zip files work, and they, as you can see from the change notes here, they have expanded it quite a bit over time, but the basic truth of it has not changed since the 1980s. Overall zip file format you have a header that tells you what the file is, an optional encryption header, which we're not going to deal with, the actual encrypt, the actual compressed data, something that's almost never there, and then it starts again. Now, the local file header is just a couple of bytes, so we're just going to load this in and see what we can do with it. So, let's see here. Uh, okay, um, so let me find my editor, which is vanished down here somewhere. There you are. Okay. Yes, okay, here we go. So, um, we're not going to do anything super fancy with zip files here. We're not going to have careful streaming or encryption or even compression for this first round of this. Uh, and almost everything we write today we're going to throw away too. So, uh, but I, I want you to see how this works. So let's, ha let's have a structure. What we're going to do is we're going to have this thing, plus a zip entry. And also, we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to load everything in the file, all the metadata about the files that that are inside the zip file, and then we'll load the actual data as we need it. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll have a zip archive that we pass around, and the zip archive is basically just going to be, and no, let's, you know, let's, it's SDL. We have a UN32. Let's just use that. Num entries zip entry pointer entries and then zip entry is just simply going to be a couple of things we need to know where did my web browser go there you are uh, these are the things that are in there I'm just going to paste this in here so I have it but most of this we don't even need so we're just going to say you in 32 compression type oh, lost it compression type and we don't care when the file is modified or it's checksum or anything like that. We're not trying to get fancy here. We need to know its file name. Well, char pointer, why not? F name, compression type, how big it is. Yeah, okay. Unit 32, compressed size, and uncompressed sized and of course file position where it starts okay cool that's pretty much all we're going to need to get the data we need out of a zip file and there's a lot more metadata in there and we don't care about it so we're just going to ignore it for now um yeah i think yeah that should do it okay so zip archive zip entry static zip archive pointer load or zip archive our F name that we want to load it from. All right, so, oh, here's one other thing we're gonna need in the zip archive. Steal, read, write, ops, read, write. Now, we've talked about these briefly before because this is how we load bitmaps too. A read, write, ops, all this thing is is an SDL structure. is just a bunch of function pointers and a structure that says, here's how you read from this thing. Here's how you write to it. Here's how you seek to in it and stuff like that. More or less, it's a very simple abstraction over 
file I.O., but we can use it for things other than files, which we're going to show you in a moment here. Well, later on in this, I think. Okay, so let's start loading this thing. So first off, we're going to need read write ops to read from. So let's do SDL read write. Make sure I call this thing correctly. From file, I think it's called. There it is. Read write from file. Okay. Where'd you go? There you go. Read write from file with our F name. And mode is just the same mode you would give to F open. So we'll just say read in binary mode. Um, in fact, this actually uses F open behind the scenes on most platforms. Okay, so we have that. Uh, if that returns null, then that'll set SDL get error and we'll just return null. And sorry, you're out of luck. Um, okay, so now. We're going to need a couple of things here. You went 32, and I'll show you why I'm making these in a moment. Uh, as you can see, in this local file header, we're going to read everything is either four bytes or two bytes. So we're just going to, and most of it we're going to throw away. So we'll just have some generic 32 and 16 bit variables that will hold these things. So, um, okay, while SDL, where'd you go? Where'd you go? SDL. Read, right, read. I pass it, there it is, okay. Make sure I do this right. Well, read what, right, read our IO thing, where we want to write it to, which will be UN32. Size will be size of, we're gonna read four bytes. And just one, one four byte, one, four byte object like you would get from f read okay so let's get rid of that so while that equals one like we haven't hit an error at the end of the file we're not going to distinguish between these two because we do not care uh, we're just going to keep going until one of those two things fails okay um so ui32 equals sdl swap little endian all the data in this file is little endian because it was written for ms dos originally on an x86 processor uh, so we're just going to say this data that we read from the file these four bytes we believe them to be in little Indian format. So just make sure that th this does nothing if you're on a little Indian machine, which is most things. But if you happen to be on like a power PC or uh, something like that, this will take those four bytes, put them in the opposite order and assign it here. So that you'll actually have the correct number regardless of which kind of processor you're on. So that's just for safety's sake, we're doing that. Okay, so now if UI32 does not equal, what was the magic number here? There it is. Breakout because we're definitely done. Something incorrect happened. Um, magic number four, local, what do they call it? Local file header. So every record should start with this. If it doesn't, either we've hit the end of the file or things are corrupt or something, so just quit at that point. Again, we're not looking for perf per uh, perfection here. We're just looking to chew through this data. Okay, now we need all this stuff. So, and we don't care about most of these fields. So a lot of this is going to be just reading it and throwing it away. We're not even going to look for errors because if there is an error, then the next time we get up to the top of this loop, that error will still exist and life will go on. All right, read, write, uh, the, it'll still exist and we'll drop out at that point. So we want to read a 16-bit one, make sure that's that, okay. And that's just version needed to extract, but we don't care. So we're just going to throw that away. Uh, Likewise, for the general purpose bit flags, which are important, but not for our needs right now. Compression method, we do need that. Let's um, let's make up a field here. Zip entry, entry. Make sure this thing is set to zero to start with. Okay. So then we get down here, we get our general purpose bit flag and our compression method. That was the next thing. So entry compression type equals SDL swap in 16, same as before, it's 16 bit instead of 32. Okay, uh, then we don't care about the file time, so we'll skip that field. We don't care about the file date, so we'll skip that field. We don't 
care about the CRC32, but we do care that it's 32 bits, so let's make sure we read the right amount. We do care about the compress size, so we're going to take, oh gosh, stop doing that. Okay, entry compressed size equals you know, swap millennium32. And then the uncompressed size is, of course, next, so let's do that too. All right. Then we need file name length and the extra field length. Let's keep those separate here. These, yeah, we need those up there, that's fine. Um, human 16, F name len. There we go. F name len equals SDL swap. Little Indian 16. And then same thing for extra field length. And the extra field length, the file name length is just the number of bytes. Extra field length, yeah. Extra len. So the file name length is just the number of bytes that make up the file name and in UTF-8, actually, but we're just going to treat it as ASCII for now. We're actually just going to ignore it and just call it, it it's bytes. We don't care. So we'll take care of that in a moment. The extra field has all sorts of magic stuff in it, and we don't care about any of it. Uh, so we're going to just you keep track of that so we can jump over that data. All right, so now that we've read all of these things, then the next thing is the file name, which is variable length, and that's why we've read in the file name length. So let's get this thing here, extra what I call this thing. F name extra F name equals char pointer SDL malloc F name len plus one. You need a plus one for the null terminator, and then we're going to go SDL read write read from our thing to extra F name. You will note that I am not checking to see if malloc failed because this code's going away next time. So we just want to get through this without a whole lot of error checking. And if remarkable situations like the memory. Uh, memory runs out right here, or the, we fail to read halfway through this file, too bad, this code's going away. Um, F name length, one. Okay, so that goes through. Do, 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 cool. Uh, and then, of course, extra F name. We got null terminate it because it is not name len. If you had a three byte thing, you want zero, one, two, three with the third one. No, uh, no minus one or anything on this to get you the null terminator spot. Okay. Okay, so now we have read from the file name, and now we just gotta skip over the extra field because we don't care about anything that might be in there. So we're gonna do SDL, read write, seek, read write. I always get these in the wrong order, so I'm gonna look this up real quick. Where'd you go? There you are. Context offset whence. Context offset is extra len, and we're going to go read, write, seek, current, like that. Um, this is one of those rare symbols in SDL that is not prefixed by SDL. We're hoping we're going to fix that in SDL3. But just if you see that and you go, where did this come from? It's just a quirk of SDL that we need to fix in a future version. So that will jump over the extra len so we don't care. And then <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, there is no encryption header that we care about. You can check those those general purpose flag bits, see if there should be one. We're not going to because we don't care. Then the file data comes next. So at this point, extra, what I call it, file position? Yeah, file pause. File position equals SDL read write tell, which just says give me the current position in the file. And then we need to seek again to get past. Dun, dun, dun. We need to skip over the compressed length of the file because the next thing in here is the file data, which we're skipping for now because we just want to get to the next local file header. And after the file data comes a data descriptor, which we are going to ignore. This is only here if a certain bit is set in the header, which we're ignoring because most things don't set it. This is just here to replicate some of the information that's up here. If you were streaming a, file, a zip file as you were creating it and couldn't update these fields until after you got past the file data and knew how big it would be compressed. But most things don't do that, so we're going to ignore it and just hope it works out. 
that's the size. Um, and of course, if you have uncompressed data in here, which you can in a zip file, compressed size and uncompressed size are the same. Okay, so we're seeking past that. We know, so let me make sure I filled in all the fields on this entry now. We know it's F name, we know it's compression type, we know it's size, we know it's position. All right, I think that's everything. So now we just need to go find my thing again. There you are. So now we've saw, seeked past it. We know we're ready for next local file header, presumably, because uh, we're ignoring encryption fields and stuff like that. Now we need to uh, add this thing, void pointer equals SDL realloc. What did we call this thing before? Oh, we have not actually made an archive yet. Okay, let's do that first before we do anything else. Zip archive pointer retval equals archive pointer SDL calloc. I like to use SDL calloc instead of malloc because it guarantees everything will be zero in your thing. It's If you're definitely going to fill everything in a, in, uh, a structure, then it's not necessary, but like this makes sure even like the padding is filled in, so if you try to run this under Valgrin later and do a mem copy of it, it won't cause uh, it to freak out and stuff like that. But also, you know, it, it, everything is a matter of personal preference and where it makes sense to do it. But for small things like this, where it's like, I don't know, I might get halfway through this and fail and need to free things that aren't null. It's nice just to have everything set to, set to null right at the front. I'd like to say I just uh, was flailing around with my hands while I was saying that and just smacked the microphone. So if you all heard that, that was, that was my fault. I apologize. Uh, I speak with my hands a lot. I don't know. All right, so that's there. We'll check if that fails. If red bell equals null. See how read, write, close the thing we already did. Return null. I don't want to get into a whole bunch of error checking here because, you know, life's too short for th code you're about to throw away. So we have a copy of that. Okay. So now down here, we need to go run val entries. Do we put that in there? Hang on a second. Yeah, we did. OK. Entries. And it, this just works like regular C runtime realloc. Size of zip entry times run val num entries plus 1. We're just going to assume that worked out. Okay. Uh, normally here you would be like if pointer handle, or if not pointer handle what to do if you've run out of memory, but we're not bothering with that. So val entries equals pointer. Let's see. Steal mem copy. Our entry, we just, oh, uh, ref val entries. Remember, we have not incremented num entries yet, so this is, on your first one, this is still zero. This will still be the beginning of the array. Uh, entry size of zip entry. Okay, we have now added that to our array, and now we can simply increment this. There you go. And we're going to carry on like that. Okay, and that's it. Now, again, we're also not going to deal with compression here, so this is going to tell you everything you need to know about the zip file without us doing anything beyond reading a couple of bytes from it. Okay, so static void unload zip archive. So we can do the opposite of this. Zip archive pointer. Let's call it zip, why not? If zip SDL free zip entries, because that's the thing we allocated, and then SDL free zip. Oh, and of course we need to, if zip read write, steal read write close, zip read write, just so that's not peaking. There we go. All right, so, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we can load a zip file, so we have a list of all the files in it and how to get at them, and then we can unload that archive. So now let's go deal with, we're going to need two more things on this, I think. Um, Where's load skin? There we are. Okay, so right now we have these hard coded. See all these fix me's over here? Fix me hard coded. Let's un and this fix me use this variable for f name. Let's get rid of these fix me's because we're about to fix it. No 
longer classic because we're going to pull this right out of the zip file, presumably. There we go. Cool. Um, so now in here, we need to load the zip file. Zip archive zip equals what I call that thing? Load zip archive. Come here. Load zip archive. F name. See, now we're using that variable, so there you go. Okay. We do not care if this is null, if this fails, because it might be a directory. It might not be a, a zip file by itself, or it might not exist, or we're just going to ignore it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Now, load texture. This thing here, um, it's calling load bitmap with this file name, but we don't want to do that anymore. Uh, as you can see, load bitmap is just a little macro that wraps load bitmap read write, which is the same thing, except taking a file name, it takes a read write ops. SDL read write ops read write read write and free source the second argument just says whether it should close that read write ops on your behalf uh, when you're done which is useful here because we're going to create a, a read write ops as a throwaway thing and we don't want to see it whether this works or not so uh, whether it loses the bitmap or not we want this thing to go away so let's go deal with that real quick okay so throw a simple thing in here because instead of giving it a file name we're not going to give it a read write off so we're going to wrap this in a little thing that will decide to either get it from the zip file if that's not null or get it from the directory if it's an f name instead so let's go ahead and do that come here there we go static sdl read write ops pointer open read write and this is either going to be a zip archive or dir name maybe and const char f name okay so in here we want to say if there's a zip file if it's if we definitely have one then we want to look in that other and you know let's do this first let's, let's deal with that case before we worry about the else so what we want to do here zip archive if i can spell okay let me just copy these down there just so we can see what these things are okay okay so for u int 32 i equals zero and we're just going to go through i zip num entries i plus plus this is just going to be just iterate through this array we've created of entries and see if we can find the thing uh, now you'll note also while we're here that we kept the read write ops object that we used to over to iterate through the zip file because we're going to need to read the actual zip data out of it too so that's why that's still there um, okay, so if, well, let's get this const, const zip entry pointer entry equals the address of zip entries. Sometimes instead of having to like keep going back and typing this whole thing in, it's just nice to have it be a pointer directly to it. Entry f name. Okay, so if, come here, sdl string case compare. So if the thing we're looking for, if the thing that we're looking for, so string case, STL string case compare is just another little C runtime wrapper. It's nice because you don't have to worry about on Windows, they want you to call the string I compare and on Unix, they want it to be string case compare. It all looks like this on every platform. So it's just a little, little convenience thing there. But we wanna know if this entry in the zip file is the name that we are looking for. And this solves another problem since it is case insensitive comparing here we don't have to worry about, you know, if they named it with capital letters like we're having on this Linux file system normally. So um, so uh, if they match, then we found our guy. And what we want to do is give you a read write ops to it. So let's first off put a return in here because we're going to, 
well, we're going to put an actual thing in there in a second, but we don't want to go on once we found it, no matter what, so. So let's do this. Okay, so we want to go SDL, read, write, seek. And again, you should be checking for error codes here, but you know, life is too short for now. So let's move the read, write ops to the position in the file where this should be, which is entry, file position, read, write, seek, set. And I'm gonna make sure I put those in the right order because this has been an ongoing curse for me. Yeah, okay, the, this comes last, okay, good. Uh, seek set means this number of bytes from the beginning of the file instead of from the current read position. So that, that works out. Okay, so we're seeking to that point, and then we are going to, uh, we're gonna need a buffer here. Uh, uint eight buff equals uint eight. Maybe I don't even need this to be that, honestly. It can be a void pointer. SDL malloc. See, I'm not doing calloc here because we're about to fill this whole buffer. Um, malloc entry compressed size, I think is what I called it, compressed size. Let's call this data. And again, you should absolutely check for failures here, but we're just going to go on as if they're, everything's hunky-dory. Because if the program crashes, we'll know something went wrong. Read. What's the order this goes in? I always get these wrong if I don't do this. So. All right. Okay, so we read from the read-write ops. We need to put, uh, read this into data. Entry compress size. And one. And we don't care if this fails. I mean, we do, but especially if this one fails, and then you know, uh, load bitmap later on, it's gonna be like this is not correct bitmap data, presumably. So I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. It doesn't matter. We're throwing it out. Okay. Read, write, read. Okay. So now we have the compressed data. Now, if we were serious at this point, we would have to check if entry compression type does not equal zero, and you would want to push this through. Zlib or mini Z or something that handles deflate data. Uh, but if the compression type is zero, which we hope it is, in fact, I'll put an assert in there. Because we are not going to handle this for now. Equals zero. Uh, if it's uncompressed, then we're done. We just read the data from the zip file and that's it. Okay. Um, so now we just have to do SDL read, right? I got it. Read write from const, where are you at? Oh, I'm in the wrong file, hang on. There we go. Did I miss it? There it is, okay. Oh, well, that was easy. Now, like I said, you can have a read write ops that reads from a file, which we've seen before with STL RW from file, but you can also do it and say, this is just a block of memory, which is what we're doing here, and the size is Entry. I'm going to say uncompressed size, which should be the same if you're compressed, if you're using uncompressed data. But in theory, if we ever add this actual if case, you would want the thing you're finally giving it to be the uncompressed size because it would be uncompressed at this point. Um, uh, so as far as this goes, it'll still be a read write ops file, but instead of reading from a file, it'll read from a block of memory and keep track of state internally to know like when you read to move the pointer that it's reading from ahead in data ahead in memory instead of just moving the file pointer because there's no file here. So you're done, you've read any uncompressed data from the zip files or only handling uncompressed zip files and that will go from there. So cool. Now and then of course if you didn't find it turn null because womp womp the file didn't exist. Okay. Which is to say that if you still are here wasn't a zip file uh, Let's say we don't have a zip file read from disk. And then we just need to say buff equals, oh, let's call it full path, why not? Equals SDL. Now look again, we're going to uh, fill this whole buffer so we don't care. SDL string len name plus SDL stringlen. And again, this is just the C runtime wrapper. It works exactly like stringlen does. F name plus two. So we have one for a path separator and one for a null terminator. And SDL SN print F. Here, 
Here, let's do this. Full path len size t full path len equals that. So, because I'm about to use that again. Full path, full path len. Done, done. And then just simply dir name, f name. And at the end, you get the string with the full path with the parent directory and the file you want in it. Now, we are not going to take the time with this either to look for a file name that has the correct case. Uh, we're just going to skip that for now. Because uh, that's been a problem this whole time. So we're just going to keep that problem for now. In fact, will that fix me? Name case is a problem on Unix. OK. On Windows and Mac OS, not so much for the most part. Um, OK, so then SDL read write ops pointer retval equals SDL read write from file. Full path to it. Come here. Read binary. Sure, why not? Don't forget to free this buffer. And then return retval. OK, there. Bump a bump a bump. We did all that. We don't need these things anymore this anymore. Okay, so now when we come in here, the first thing we do when we load a skin is try to load a zip archive. If that's null, that's okay. <clears throat> we come down through load texture, and this will send read, a read write ops to have a file name to load texture. Load texture. We should just be careful here and just say if read write equals null, just return null immediately. Okay. Because um, remember, the, the thing we did with our skins is that we're grace. We fail in, in air quotes here. We fail gracefully with this. So if load texture fails and gives us a null, we don't care. We'll just try to draw some colored rectangles instead. Um, so we don't report error messages or anything here. We'll just keep on going with whatever we can and cannot get. So, um, so that'll load all those things like it did before. And then of course at the end of this. And we could probably just have to reload the textures. Let's see if I regret that. Unload, is that what I called it? Unload zip archive, okay. Unload zip archive zip. And then that thing was, uh, oops, gracious enough to, if this is null, we don't care because it'll check it. So here, even if we didn't actually have a zip file, it'll do the right thing. We'll just clean up after ourselves, so that's good. Now, there is one thing that's leaking here. I'm going to point this out because, again, we're going to throw this out later. Um, open read write down here. Um, the thing that this returns, the read write ops will get closed, but this buffer of data that we malloced will not. Uh, that's just leaking memory. And again, we'll fix that when we throw all this stuff out. But I'm just showing you, I'm just giving you the idea of what we're aiming for here today. Um, so we load those. That's cool. Where do we load the skin at? Fix me, load a real thing, not an empty string. Well, it's funny you should say that. Let's do that very thing. Classic dot winamp skin zip. And that'll do that. Although I gotta say, load skin. We actually don't care if this fails anywhere, because like I said, we always fall back. So let's not even return anything from that. Let's just load skin like this. It doesn't work, doesn't work. Don't care. We're not going to panic and abort. Um, the worst happens you have a weird looking skin, or no skin at all, but some basic color rectangles. In which case, you'll be pretty clear that something went wrong. You won't need a message box to tell you that. Um, I don't know. Let's see if it worked. I'm trying to think here. So we load the skin. We do that. We parse the zip file. Let's see what it does. Let's fix some extras here. Extra. Huh, that's not the name of the thing. It was um, entry. Same amount of letters, you can see how I made the mistake. Entry, and then I apparently cut and pasted it forever. It just cut and pasted into my brain. I don't know, one of those two things. Oh my gosh, Ryan. Okay. Let's see if I fixed it. Oops. Come back, here we go. All right, let's see here. Oh my gosh, how many times did I do this? <laughs> how embarrassing. Oh yeah, that helps have an equal sign there. Sorry if you've been just chewing on 
your laptop watching this for the last hour. Sorry about that. Um, uh, read write teal is not going to work. We're going to need read write tell to tell us where in the file we are. So that was just a typo. Control reaches. Oh yeah, we got to actually return something here. Return retval. There we go. And that's always a loop. So that's okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? Read write teal. I rule. Okay, so I think we are good here. Yeah, okay, good. Let's see if it works. Of course it does not work. Okay, let's figure out what we did wrong here. This is when we always bust out GDB. Everyone's favorite. Load zip archive. Run. Oh, <laughs> we don't have a file. Okay, that would be why. Um, so, so we need these things in a zip file. They're just loose files right now. So let's just do cd classic zip zero on the zip command line so it does not add compression to any of these, which is generally not what you want, but we'll skin z do that. There we go. So now we should have classic dot there we go. Okay, so let's try this one more time and see if this works now. Oh, that's much better. Okay. Now we have all our stuff, but it read from a zip file. All right, that's good. Pretty, pretty. Cool. All right. So let's, well, let's zip up these other ones just while we're here. And obviously every Winamp skin that you see on the internet is going to have compression in their zip file, but we are going to deal with that later. This is, I just wanted to show you that zip files are not scary. They're, you can get into the contents of a zip file ridiculously easily in most cases. And there, as you can see from the zip specification, this goes on for quite a while. There is a lot of corner cases and extra features that have been bolted on this thing since the mid 80s. But, um, uh, you know, most of it you can ignore just for your basic usage. And when we replace this with something that's serious, it will worry about these things for you. But, um, okay, so let's, Where's that thing I just zipped? So let's do one for the atlas. There we go. And let's do one for that high for the Sony Hi-Fi thing. Hi-Fi. Did that work? Wait, where am I? Oh, no, that was dumb. What did I just do? Oh, haha, <laughs> no, that's not gonna work. All right, Hi-Fi, let's redo that one. There. Right. Did that work? Okay, let's see what we have. Unzip hi-fi, whatever. I'm just going to do that again just to make sure I didn't screw that up. Yeah, okay, and then let's redo the atlas too just in case I was in the wrong directory. Just to make sure here. Zip. See, and that's why we check. Um, well, they came out as different sizes, so I guess they're probably okay. All right, well, let's see if it works now. Let's see. I, one thing I want to add to this while I'm thinking about it. So, um, load skin. Where'd you go? First things first, if we wanted to ever switch skins, we're going to need to free up things in the skin. Which sounds very Silence of the Lambs. I didn't mean it to. Let's see. None of these things, these are all just plain old data. Even these pointers are not things we own, so... So we can just do that. We can just zero it out. But these need to be freed. So let's free these. Because we blank out the skin to start loading it. But let's make sure these get freed. Uh, SDL, destroy, texture, skin, text me. I guess we should check to make sure that's really a thing before we do that, too. Just in case these are set to anything. If this is not null, then destroy it. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. And let's destroy this thing too. Probably should have done that too, but that's okay. There we go. something important there. All right, 
right, so that'll clear out anyone that was there before, and then zero it, and then we load it from scratch. Cool. Let's move this down here so it's just near where we actually use it. Okay. So one more thing for you here, since now we can do this. string reverse char, which is just string reverse char, but wrapped in SDL. So you know you definitely have it on any platform. I'm going to look at the file name that is dropped to us from uh, this being dropped on our window. I'm going to look for this so we can see the extension on it. If pointer, if it's not null, there's an extension. And SDL string case compare pointer what we call this thing, dot wsz equals zero, or let's just make sure we have this. Um, let's do this again, because sometimes they ship skins and dot zip files. So we'll, 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 we'll accept either for this purpose. Is that right? Okay. So if it's either of those, then we want to what I call this thing, load skin. Load skin with e drop file is the file name for the zip file. Cool. Otherwise, treat it like an audio file that is being dropped on there, and then we always free the file name, so we're cool. So theoretically, you can now just drop a new skin file onto the window, and it'll change. Let's see if it works. I guess I should compile that. Okay, there we go. So, SDL amp, let's do that. There's our default classic thing we had. Let's see here. Oops. Okay, let's put this guy over here. Let's put this dude over here. Let's see how we did here. So, right now it has the classic one on there. Reload that by default. Let's drop the Atlas on here. Boop, now we have an Atlas skin. Where's the other thing? How did all this junk get in here? Where'd my other skin go? Do it by modified. Atlas, here's the hi fi skin. Boop. And back to classic. And back to Atlas. This is pretty cool. I love it. Oh, it's so nice. Okay, cool. And they still work? Yes, they do. What if we put the hi fi skin on there? Still works. Very nice. Oh, I love it. It's so cool. I love it when things work on the first try. It makes me very happy. Woo! All right, I think that's it. We are just under 45 minutes here. We're at 43 minutes, so um, hooray. Uh, I'll put my classic skin up because it looks cooler. Because I can, because I can just drop it on there and it works. Um, that's exciting. Okay, today we figured out how to open a zip file and pull data out of it with very, very little code. And next time we're going to rip that out and do it the right way. But I just wanted to show you. It's just so easy to do things that you think of as these black boxes that are intimidating blobs of data that you've dealt with your whole life. But um, especially things like zip files where they're just like this, out of the necessity of the computing power they had, these had to be fairly simple back then. So um, it's just kind of neat that you can just crack that black box open and just see what's inside of it. So, so okay, we're done for the day. We're just at 44 minutes now. I'm going to call it a day. Uh, next time we'll do more fun stuff. And... Um, don't forget to join my Patreon because it's looking really lonely here without new names. <laughs> without new names to put in this thing. So don't be shy. Go to my Patreon link and you can add your name to the list. Okay, thank you. I will see you next time.